What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're taking a look at Star Wars Outlaws on my RX 6800 XT Ryzen 5900X build. We're going to see how the game runs on this PC. I'm actually, it's the first time I fired the game and I happened to watch Hardware Unboxes up to my settings video and since I'm already aware this game is quite demanding, having uh, done videos on it previously, I decided to go with their optimized settings and uh, we're going to start with 1440p. We have frame generation disabled for now and we're going with FSR native AA and the graphical settings is their recommended settings which is a, a mixture of even a few outlaws uh, unlock settings as well. But let's load in the game and see how it runs. Okay, and here we are guys, we seem to be getting, uh, well, 60 FPS. And, uh, I mean, game looks pretty good. We had a couple hitches there. Like I said, this is the very first time I run the game. So, the game's been pretty smooth on my other build. So, I don't think it's going to be an issue here until things settle down a little bit. But, uh... The outdoor areas, these open areas, are the most demanding areas in the game. When you go into the cities, it's actually not too, too bad. There it becomes more CPU intensive uh, than out here, but here it's where it's most graphically intensive. And FSR Native AA looks alright, It although I do feel it looks a bit grainy, a bit crunchy. I don't know, what do you guys think? You can see like a fizzle around the character. As I pan the camera around. Or is that just me? Now maybe it might not come through to YouTube. But I can most certainly see it a little bit. You know what? Let's try. Let's just try the temporal anti-aliasing. So we'll switch FSR3 to temporal anti-aliasing. Right, you know what? I don't think this looks as grainy. Although it does look a bit ghosty as well. So that's kind of interesting. Huh. I don't know. What do you guys think? This is Temporal Native AA. And this is FSR Native AA. I think FSR Native AA looks a bit over sharpened. Now, what about the performance? Well, we're getting 60 FPS. However, this is 21 by 9 with the black bars. I actually don't mind the black bars. Personally, I think it looks more like a movie, uh, which I, I do like. But let's try disabling the black bars. It should be more demanding that way. And it is. We went from 60 FPS to 54 FPS. That's actually not bad. Very playable FPS, but this is with FSR native AA. I think temporal AA should actually give us a bit more performance back because the FSR computational load is a bit higher. So let's go ahead and try temporal anti-aliasing, which in my opinion actually looks less grainy. And there you go. We went from like 54, 55 FPS to low 60s. So you get a bit more performance with temporal uh, native AA or even temporal upscaling instead of FSR upscaling. So you can actually have a choice there to do however you wish. Alright, so now that we're moving pretty fast, actually, the FPS seem to be uh, fairly consistent, actually. We are dropping into the low 50s. The conclusion so far is that 1440p native is actually very doable. Yeah, in these very demanding open areas, you'll drop below 60 a bit, but it's still very playable. Not that big a deal. However, we can drop from native AA to ultra quality and we're going to stick with temporal anti-aliasing for now. Although FSR also has an ultra quality setting. So this is higher, closer to native res than quality, obviously. And yeah, drop into ultra quality actually keeps us closer to 60 FPS. I think this would be the way to play this game at 1440p if you did not want to use frame generation. But we are going to explore frame generation. Still though, as you can see, in this smaller area now, we went all the way up to the mid-70s. Now these couple hitches that we're getting, traversal hitches, are not lost on me. And I'm trying to think if it's because I'm running the game for the very first time on this PC. Or maybe because my NVMe drive on this other build is 
pretty full. <laughs> so I don't know if that's influencing that, but I'm just uh, just thinking here because having played the game on my other PC, it's actually fairly smooth. And for the most part, here it is as well. But anyway, we'll grab this mission and check out frame generation. Are you CeeLo? I need to kick up the power on my speeder. All right, so we can actually try to do this mission. And I think this is also a pretty good opportunity to take a look at FSR frame generation. I'm running the game on 175 hertz display, so I could most certainly take advantage of it. Okay, so this is a problem. We can't use frame generation with temporal anti-aliasing. All right, so we're going to have to use FSR. Okay, but anyway, with FSR in ultra quality, we get 61 FPS. And with frame generation on top, should take us to like 90 maybe. Yeah, oh, more than that, 111. All right, that's pretty good. Well, let's make our way to the quest. And again, like I said, these outdoor areas are the most graphically demanding areas. Once you go indoors, it's actually, uh, you'll see your FPS shoot up. You could probably increase the graphical fidelity there. There's actually large chunks of the game that do take place in such areas, by the way. And this is also a greener planet. I haven't yet made it to Tatooine, but I would assume Tatooine to be less demanding. Uh, at least I think it probably would be. But then I've heard that there's another planet that's like a forest planet. And that'll probably be more demanding. Who the heck knows? But here we go. So we've made our way indoors into the quest location. And look at our FPS, guys. We went from 110 to Those close to 100, really 150 fast. indoors. Turbine, but now my accent's blocked. Shouldn't be a problem for you, though. I mean, you are really good at this. No, yeah, I, I am. You just think there'd be an easier way to get an atmospheric accelerator. We've now made it into the Imperial base. And by the way, these are the areas where pretty much all missions take place in. Some are bigger than others with more NPCs and whatnot, but this is the overall uh, very common area you'll be in. And look at that, we're at 160 FPS, whereas outside we were at 110. Now we're going to take a look at 4K next, but before we do that, I just wanted to go back to 1440p native temporal AA. Out in the open area, in the grass fields, we were getting... 50 to 60 FPS and let's try the same here I just want to show you the the variance in uh, graphical demand depending on where you are and look at that we're at 80 FPS here that's that's a pretty big difference that's like a 30% increase in FPS just from going outside open area to inside a mission right very very big difference so this here concludes our look at 1440p 6800 XC does a really good job. I mean, you could really run it at native 1440p with the hardware unboxed, optimized settings, and be pretty much at 60 FPS, even in the worst areas. So at 1440p, it's very, very capable. But what about 4K? Well, we're going to take a look at the big outdoor areas, and I also want to make it to the big main city uh, in this first world. So let's take a look at that and see how the 6800 XD does with the 4K target resolution. All right, so here we are at 4K. I'm using my LG C1 OLED display for this one. That's why the difference in monitor refresh rate. And we've dropped down to the quality for upscaling. So we're using temporal anti-aliasing quality. As far as the settings, they're still the same exact settings as the hardware unboxed optimized settings, which look really, really good. And let's see, this one's probably going to be quite a bit uh, heavier, obviously, <laughs> than 1440p with the ultra quality upscaling. And as you can see here, we have frame generation off. And we're getting 50 FPS. Uh, drop into the mid 40s so yeah not not great 
Although it's not terrible, but it's not great. I think we're probably going to have to make a, a few more compromises. And again, I wanted to start in this big open area because this is the more, the most demanding area. And even here, you can see it can vary, right? We can go from 45 to, well, as high as 60 in this little town here. So, in my opinion, we're going to have to make some more uh, compromises. Uh, which we can actually begin by lowering some of the the ray trace settings down a notch and see if that helps because uh, dropping to the mid 40s doesn't feel very good so yeah let's try let's try lowering some of the ray trace settings um, just a notch and see if we gain any more fps so we're at 47 fps currently we'll drop all of these down a notch so high to medium ultra to high we can't drop that any lower medium medium and let's see we were at 47 fps confirm so that takes us to eh, 50 51 fps so not a huge gain i think we're gonna have to make up uh with upscaling so let's try temporal anti-aliasing balanced and then we'll try fsr as well obviously because we're gonna check out frame generation we're gonna have to right so if we drop the balance well we're actually pretty much at 60 57 fps that's pretty good uh, definitely totally playable like this if you wanted to stick with taa and don't like frame generation i think this would be the way to go Alternative, you could use FSR balance, but that's going to be a little bit costlier as far as FPS. You're going to lose some FPS uh, instead of going with uh, TAA. But since I do want to try uh, frame generation, let's take a look at FSR balance. So we'll just leave that on balance and swap to FSR. So we were close to 60 with TAA, and with FSR, we dropped to the low 50s, 52 FPS. So as you can see, there is a bit of a higher um, uh, latency overhead to using FSR over TAA. But still, I think this is still very playable. I think as long as you don't drop into the 40s, it's fine with VRR. Drop into the mid 50s, low 50s, it doesn't really feel that bad. You probably wouldn't even know if you didn't have the FPS counter on, right? So, yeah, I think this is actually pretty good. It's definitely very playable. It looks and feels pretty good. Traveling fast in our speeder outdoors, I'd say this is probably a worst case scenario type of uh, setting. We, we remain in the mid 50s overall. So, yeah, this is very good, guys. What we can do here is as we make our way to the city, we can go ahead and throw some uh, frame generation on top and it should should be great actually we already have a very good base frame rate for uh, frame generation so yeah let's go ahead and throw frame generation on top of fsr balance at 4k we should be close to 90 fps for sure accept and yeah right at 90 we're in the mid 90s and this looks very 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 smooth very nice well let's make our way to the big city and see if there's a difference in fps i suspect the big city will probably be less demanding because it's you know it's a, it's a small it's like smaller zones you know it's not this huge massive area but i don't know i haven't actually looked at it in this gpu yet so this will be the very first time and it's straight ahead and we're about to pull into the city guys and we went from uh mid 80s to 100 fps so as you've seen uh entering these big you know smaller areas it's it's a bit less demanding and the game still looks nice actually i've noticed that fsr frame generation which i'm checking out for the first time now and DLSS frame generation actually work pretty well as long as your base frames not below 50 FPS I think you'll be good uh, but yeah this is actually pretty solid um, I want to try going back to quality upscaling and turning off frame generation so for that I'm gonna go back to TAA because I think it looks slightly better and it costs less performance and that actually keeps us in the 50s. Actually, the city's a bit more demanding than I thought it would be. 
but it's still actually pretty good FPS here overall. Um, and yeah, man, this is 4K with uh, quality upscaling, 6800 XT. I think it's actually doing pretty good, guys. I don't know. What do you think? Leave a comment down below. Uh, let me know what you think. I think it's actually very good. I think if you had a 6800 XT um, and bought one from day one, or even if you bought one recently, uh, they, they could be found for around as, as low as $330 I seen one uh, a little while ago. So you made out pretty good. This is a solid GPU that I feel has plenty of... Uh, more life to give as you've seen you can do 1440p native with the latest and greatest the games look great and even 4k with a bit of upscaling the game still looks really good and especially with frame generation you can take that motion fluidity to the next level but leave a comment down below and let me know what you think i'd like to hear your uh your opinion and thoughts and uh give the video a like if you liked it um uh, this is the 6800 xt in star wars outlaws with the latest driver by the way 24.8 point one but that's gonna be it for me guys i'll see you in the next one bye bye